Have you ever gotten to the end of a page and realized you had no idea what you just read? This happens to everybody sometimes, even expert readers. The best way to avoid this is to work on being an active reader. Active readers are always thinking about what they read. They make connections to what they already know about a topic. They ask questions about what they read. And they check their comprehension. In other words, they don't wait until they get to the end of the page to check if they remember anything. They check whether they understand while they are reading. To be an active reader takes a little practice, but it's key to your success, so let's start practicing now. To be an active reader, focus on practicing the following strategies. First, active readers connect what they're reading to something they know or have experienced in their lives. Active readers ask questions as they read. They predict what the text will be about or what the author may say. And they explain what they're reading to themselves in their own words so that they understand better. Now if you put these strategies together, connect, ask, predict, and explain, they make the word cape. So think of cape as you practice your active reading skills and that'll help you remember. So to understand how these strategies work, I'm going to do a little demonstration. First, I'm going to read this article. While I'm reading, I'm going to describe to you how I'm using cake strategies to actively read. This will let you see what's going on inside my head as I work to understand this text. For you to become an active reader, you're going to want to think about the same kind of things I do every time you read. Now here's a short article I'm going to use as an example. Before we begin, let's take a look at some of the tools available to us while we read. Notice that there's a toolbar across the top of the window. The button with the arrows allows you to make the window bigger, so let's start with that. You can use the plus and minus buttons here to zoom in or out. To the right are annotation tools that allow you to leave notes on the page. Annotating while you read can be a powerful way to keep track of your thoughts and help you become more of an active reader. You are encouraged to experiment with the annotation tools, but the one we will focus on today is the highlighting tool. Begin by clicking on the tool, which looks like a highlighter pen. Then, Hold down the left mouse button and drag your cursor across the text you would like to highlight. This will put a colored line over the text. If you have more than one highlight, you can change which one you are focused on by clicking on it. You can change the color of a focused highlight by clicking on the color buttons to the left. To the right is a place to leave a note. To do this, click on the icon and type in what you want to say. Press Enter to save your note. You can delete either the note or the highlight itself by clicking on the trash can icon. Now back to the demonstration. What I'm going to do while I'm reading is look for golden lines. But what is a golden line? A golden line are the words that catch your attention, just like real gold catches your attention. A golden line might catch your attention because it stands out for some reason. Maybe it reminds you of something from your life. Or it might make you think of a question. Or it helps you predict what will happen next. Or maybe it's a little confusing so that you want to restate it using your own words and understand it better. In other words, golden lines are good for practicing CAPE reading strategies. Now here's an article called Why Emotionally Intelligent People Are More Successful. 
Now I find the title interesting, so I'm going to highlight it as one of my golden lines. In the notes area, there are a couple of things I can write using CAPE strategies. First, I can ask the questions, what does emotionally intelligent mean, and am I emotionally intelligent? This last question is also a way of connecting what I'm reading to my life. I want to know how it impacts my life. I can also make a prediction by writing, I think emotional intelligence might be when you can control your emotions, like not getting angry too easily. Maybe doing this is what leads to success. Now that's just a guess. It might be right or wrong, but seeing whether it is right or wrong can give me purpose when I read. Having a purpose really helps me read more actively. Now I'm going to continue reading. Research shows that people with strong emotional intelligence are more likely to succeed than those with high IQs or relevant experience. Honestly, that sounds a little crazy, so I'm going to highlight it. After all, something crazy or surprising definitely stands out. I can make a connection to my experience by writing, I thought IQ, or intelligence, is how most people succeed. Like Bill Gates seems like a really smart guy. I don't think of emotional intelligence when I think of him. I can ask questions by writing, does intelligence matter at all? Are emotions everything? Finally, let's go over this second paragraph. It starts off, emotional intelligence, EQ, is a vital skill for both leaders and employees. Numerous studies highlight the importance of EQ for success, even surpassing IQ and experience. The respected Center for Creative Leadership, CCL, in the US discovered that the main causes of executive failure involve shortcomings in emotional competence. Now, I'm a little confused by that last part. It's important to know when we get confused because that means we need to read it again and maybe explain it to ourselves in our own words. So the golden line is, the main causes of executive failure involve shortcomings in emotional competence. Now competence is one of our vocabulary words, which means the ability to do something well or efficiently. I know that executive is like the boss of a business. I just looked up shortcoming in the dictionary and it is a fault or weakness that makes someone less successful. So a way to explain this line to myself might be to say, a main reason for a boss's failure is when they are weak in emotional ability. Or maybe, a boss often fails because they have low emotional ability. Okay, that kind of makes sense. So I think I understand that part a little better. Now for this assignment, Make sure you finish reading the whole article, find golden lines on each page, and use CAPE strategies to make comments on each one. When you're done, return to the assignment page by clicking on the button with the arrows again. Be sure to click the button at the bottom of the page that reads Submit Assignment to send your work to your teacher. Now, as you can see, I just used a lot of CAPE strategies to help me understand the text. Sometimes I used one, two, or more of them at the same time. How you use them is really up to you and depends on the golden line. But using CAPE strategies can help you understand what you're reading better by helping you think about what you're reading a bit more. Now is your chance to practice using CAPE strategies. Read the article below and highlight golden lines in the text, just like I showed you. Write notes for each golden line using the CAPE strategies of making connections, asking questions, making predictions, and explaining the text to yourself when you get confused. You're encouraged to make as many annotations as you can as you read. The more you practice the skill of active reading, the better you will become at reading and understanding complex academic texts. You will have a number of chances to practice your active reading skills in this assignment, but don't forget that even when you move on to your next assignment, 
you should continue to make connections, ask questions, make predictions, and explain the text to yourself as you read. Eventually, if you continue to build your active reading skills, you will have the ability to read and understand almost any text. Think about it. At that point, as an expert in active reading, there will be almost nothing you can't accomplish.